Do you want to learn how to send business partner events from your SAP system via SAP Event Mesh and Azure Event Grid to a webhook? Then make sure to check out the next 15 minutes. Hi, welcome to SAP on Azure. My name is Holger Brocholt, and in this video, we want to set up the connectivity between your SAP S4HANA system, SAP Event Mesh on the Business Technology Platform, Azure Event Grid, and a simple webhook site. So let's take a look. So we start the journey with an SAP sub account on the business technology platform. The business technology platform is running on Azure and I have the better functions um, enabled. Now, in order to use the um, SAP event mesh functionality, I need to assign certain entitlements to my sub account. So if you search for event mesh, you can see that I have the standard and the new event mesh connectivity beta plan assigned to my sub account. With this, I can go to instances and subscriptions and start to create a new instance for the new event mesh connectivity service. So if you search for event mesh, you can select the plan event mesh connectivity beta. Um, I'll provide a name for the instance name and click on create. In the next step, we create an event mesh subscription. So again, select the service event mesh and in the plan now, we'll select the standard um, functionality, the standard plan. When we click on create, then the actual event mesh subscription is created in our sub account on the SAP Business Technology Platform. Now that this subscription has been created, I need to assign um, the new role collections that were that were part of this um, enablement to my user. So I select the user and from the um, role collection menu, I can search for event mesh and see the SAP event mesh integration administrator role collection. Once this role collection is assigned, I can actually start the event mesh application. In the event mesh application, we want to create a so-called custom subscription, which basically is the bridge between SAP Event Mesh and Azure Event Grid. So for this, we need to create so-called connectors. The first connector that we want to create is the connection to our S4HANA on-premises system. For this connector, we need to provide a name. So we'll call it from SAP. And in my case, um, the SAP system is called PM4. And we need to enter an CE source, which basically is the, yeah, the SAP source system. So in order to get the logical ID of the system, we'll go to um, uh, SE37 and call the own logical system name um, function. This function returns here our value, in my case, HE4 client 400, which I'll just um, copy and paste in the configuration of the connector in SAP event mesh so that the full source is def slash SAP dot S4 slash our logical system name. Now, if I click on save, the connection from our SAP event mesh to our SAP system is initially created. I mean, we still need to do some configuration on the SAP side, but we'll talk about this later. In order to now to do the configuration on the Azure event grid side, we're going there and create an SAP um, partner topic configuration. So if we search here for event grid partner topic, and then we can go to the partner topic configuration. And if I click here on create, I can um, select the resource group that I want to use for my um, connectivity between SAP event mesh and my SAP system. And I'll create a so-called partner authorization. You can see here, there's a list of partners that are pre-built by Microsoft here. So we, we worked with SAP on this to have SAP um, show up here as a dedicated partner. And we can just select the SAP system, which basically sets up the initial trust configuration between SAP Event Mesh and Azure Event Grid. Obviously, we still need to um, activate and assign um, the resources, but now we have the initial connectivity, the foundation, um, to which, which basically allows Azure um, to communicate with SAP or the other way around that SAP um, Event Mesh can actually connect to Azure Event Grid. 
So if I go back here to the um, event mesh um, system on the business technology platform, I can now create the connector to Azure Event Grid. So in this case, I just need to provide the Azure resource group name. So I, I selected here this HBR event mesh 01 in the step before. So I'll just copy the name in here. I'll paste the name in the configuration of this connector on the um, SAP event mesh side. And I do the same thing for the Azure subscription. So I'll just copy the um, subscription ID from Azure and paste it over here into this field. Now, the last thing is I need to um, provide a partner topic name, which will show up in Azure. So I'll just call this HBR partner topic and click on save. Now, what happens, what SAP Event Mesh is now doing is it reaches out to my Azure subscription. So it has the subscription ID, it has the resource group, and we have this initial connectivity um, for the partner topic already configured. So if I go now back to Azure, um, Azure Event Grid, and if I take a look at the existing partner topics, I will see the HBR partner topic that was just created from the SAP system. You can see that it has never been activated. So this is still a step that the um, Microsoft, the Azure administrator needs to do. If I go now here to this um, partner topic, I can click on activate to now really enable, activate the connectivity between my SAP event mesh system and the Azure event grid side. With all of these connectors now created, I'm ready to create the actual custom subscription um, on SAP Event Mesh. So I'll just click on Create Custom Subscription. I'll provide a name. So in this case, I'll call it From SAP to Azure. I'll select the provider, in my case, the SAP system and this specific uh, um, publisher source. And the subscriber will be Azure, so the Azure Event Grid side. If I click on Save, then now um, I have the connectivity between SAP Event Mesh and Azure Event Grid. So, so from now, the, the events that would float from my SAP system to as, um, SAP Event Mesh would be um, pushed forward to Azure Event Grid. Now, in order to finish the configuration between my SAP system and SAP Event Mesh, I'll create a, um, a service key um, on the business technology platform, which basically allows me to communicate from SAP to Event Mesh. So for this, I'll um, need some information from the actual connector that we created. So here, this um, application ID um, from our connector, I'll put this in the configuration of the service key um, in this um, special JSON format here. So um, for the application ID, I, I put um, this information. And now if I click on create, this service key is being um, created. This service key contains all the relevant information like the necessary URLs um, to connect from the SAP system into my um, uh, event mesh instance. So if I go back to my SAP system and if I go to transaction IWXBE slash config, that's the place where I now configure the channel um, from my SAP system into event mesh. So since I have the service key, I can just paste in the relevant information. I'll provide a, a channel name for our channel configuration. So we'll call this events to Azure. We'll put in a description. And now if you click on save, then the basic configuration between the SAP system and SAP event mesh is done. You can see here, um, the channel has been created. It's not yet active. The protocol is AMQP and there is a destination being created. Actually, we should check this destination. So if I click on this one, I'm in transaction SM59. I can see here all the details and there might be an issue with the host. So let's go in there and in this case, um, make sure that we remove the port since it has been specified um, in the other field already. And let's double check. So let's save this and do a connection test. The connection test should look like this. So the um, um, HTTP response 400 is actually good. There might be some other issues, for example, with the authentication or authorization. So um, one thing that could happen is that if you do not have installed in S-Trust, so in your SSL library, um, the client certificate for the endpoint that is being used by Event Mesh, then you might need to import this. So the easiest way to do this is actually if you go back to the service key and look for the URL for the um, token authorization, so the token endpoint, if you open up this URL in the browser and just retrieve the, the underlying certificate that is used for the encryption, then you can just download the certificate. And again, um, in transaction S-Trust on your SAP system, 
import this um, um, this certificate so that a secure connection can actually um, be established from the SAP system to SAP Event Mesh. So in my case now, I have fixed the configuration um, for the destination. If I go back um, to the channel configuration, then the last thing that I need to do here is um, click on Activate. Now the channel is active. But actually, the channel does not know yet which event should actually be sent um, to Event Mesh. So that's why we do the outbound binding configuration. So in for, for our, our channel here, I'll select the available outbound bindings. And in my case, I want to so focus on business partner events. So I'll just search for business partner. And you can see um, I'll just use a very broad topic filter. I don't care um, about specific create and update events. I'll just say everything that is related for business partners should be relevant. So with this now, our channel is active. We have the necessary binding, which really means if we now create a business partner in the SAP system, the event would be sent from our SAP S4HANA system into SAP Event Mesh. So now let's take a look at what we can do once the event from SAP Event Mesh is forwarded to Event Grid. So we are now switching the personas. Now I'm an Azure administrator, an Azure developer, and I want to create a subscription for events that are now available in Event Grid. So in my specific first case, I just want to take this event and forward it to a webhook site. So here in this event um, subscription creation um, screen, I will select webhook at the endpoint and I'll select a webhook um, endpoint from a from a site um, webhook.site. Um, so I'll just go to the site, I'll copy um, the URL and I'll just paste it here as the relevant endpoint. Now, if I confirm and create this, um, this subscription, I need to validate it. So actually, if we take a look at um, our webhook.site, URL, we can see there's an option call here, which basically asks me um, to validate um, the call. So, so this came from our event grid site. So if I just open up this um, URL and if I go back to event grid, I can see that the subscription was now successfully validated and I can see her a subscriber on the event grid site. Now that actually means if I go back to the SAP system and if I create a business partner here on the SAP side. So I'll provide a first name, and last name, and I click on save. Then the event would be sent from the SAP system to SAP Event Mesh, to Azure Event Grid, and from Azure Event Grid, it would be sent to our webhook site. And there we can actually see the actual entry with the payload and the this specific case with the business partner ID. I hope that this quick introduction showed you how actually easy it is to get events from your SAP system into SAP Event Mesh over to Azure Event Grid and from there to any subscriber like um, a webhook. Stay tuned for additional videos that now continue this journey of using these events that are now available in Azure Event Grid and can be integrated, for example, in other consumers and other subscribers like Teams. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe.